Jeff Ross, you mentioned another guy known. That's your boy. Another guy that's known for he's he's the Rose Master, right? He's the Rose Master, yeah. That's his that's his career. That's what what he loves. He loves the the form of it. What was it like having him for your first show? Because what was the, what was the first show with him there like? December seventeenth, two thousand thirteen. Yeah, I remember. I remember like it was yesterday. It was Benji Aflalo and Yasser Lester. That was the main event. Mm-hmm. And uh, both these guys have sold TV shows and written on TV shows. I think Yasser at this point is like the lead writer for some Marvel thing that's uh, Don Cheadle's doing. Um, but those are my boys. So it was great to see those guys really go at it because they were known as like two of the hardest joke writers in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember asking Jeff Ross, hey, would you come and do this? Uh, I emailed him because his girlfriend at the time was a Rose Battler and she was a really good Rose Battler Mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, But he he hit me back saying that he wasn't going to be in town. I was like, well, that sucks. And then uh, Brett Ernst was supposed to be there and judge that night with Brody Stevens. Um, But then Brett had to had a had a gig or something like that so he had to skip out and then jeff ross comes walking in and i'm like oh, i thought you weren't gonna fucking be here man he's like well virginia brought me here and i'm watching benji i just gotta I'm like, I'm check it out so he came up and you could see like a little kid like you know like that that sees you know uh what is that uh fao schwartz for the first time mm-hmm. you know what i mean like, like yeah. a big toy store sure. it, it really looked like that with him he was just watching being like I've never seen anything like this, and I want I want to be a part of this, and I, I don't know how to bottle this. You can see it in his face. Um, and then the next day, he emails me and says, like, what's this show, and how can we get it on TV? And I said, you tell me, man. He's like, okay. He's like, I was going to move back to New York, but I kind of like this, so give me two weeks, because that's when the new year was. He's like, and I'll get back to you. And literally, like, January 2nd, 2014, he hits me up, and it's just like, I'm, I'm staying in L.A., and I'm going to do this with you. Like Jeff was gonna like full on move back move to, to New York. He's gonna move, but he saw Rose Battle that last month of t- 2013 and said, "I'm staying." When did the first season on Comedy Central get picked up? When did it air? June, I think it was summertime, uh, 2016. Damn man! Yeah. So two years after that, pretty much two year years and a half after that, yeah, yeah year and a half, two years half, after yeah. that, you get it on Comedy Central. Yeah, with Jeff. What was that yeah. first? Like you, that must have been such a a culture shock going from like uh this is kind of like this underground fight club and that that's like really unique even within the comedy sphere mm-hmm. in the basement of the comedy store to now we are dealing with production people we're dealing with networks we're dealing with big big name talent what was it like for you like having to having to you know find your place in that goddamn storm uh i mean i'll be honest um i don't think i've ever said this on a podcast but uh they didn't really want me mm-hmm. as a host i think um the people who were going to produce it, but shout out Jeff Ross for really protecting um, the show and myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I mean, we went through so many showcases and so many meetings with so many networks and studio heads and things like that. Like we met Russell Simmons, mm-hmm. you know, and we were at Russell's house and he's doing yoga and he's <laughs> Russell, like, people have stories of Russell Simmons. That guy is remarkable. He really is. Um, I don't know how much I can say about it, but whatever. Like he, he told us, or told me, I think, he was like, yeah, I usually say, I say nigga a lot at, at, at meetings with white people because it intimidates them and it gives me a, it gives me an edge. And I'm like, that's fucking powerful. Damn. I'm always going to use the N-word around white people now. Yeah. Because normally they has. say, yeah, he has. I have. But normally they say, like, you shouldn't say the N-word around white people. It's irresponsible. But he's like, he flipped it. He's just like, no, it scares them. I'm going to say it. Uh, he gave me a book. <laughs> it was like a meditation book. He was he, he wrote. It's yeah. He's incredible. Um, but he wanted to replace me. He they wanted to buy it for HBO. Mm. Uh, because he had a a first look deal with HBO at the time, and uh, they won a roast battle and they wanted Tony Rock to host. I see. Uh, and then yeah, and I remember going up in front of Jeff and his reps, and they were like, "Show's great, but who's gonna host?" Mm. And Jeff's like Moses. They're like, "He's not ready." So it was mainly when I, when Jeff told me that it was like, okay. I, this is, that's like, I'm not your friend anymore. Like, this is a business. Like, you have to get good or we're going to replace you. Mm. So at that point, it was just like, every show was just like, I just had to like write, you know, not so much talk about the battlers because Jeff had taught me like as a host, you don't want to take their jokes, right? So don't use too many jokes up top. Cause I was like, I would just roast the fuck out of people when they came up. I was sure. like, you guys look like this. You guys look like this. And then by the end of it, you know, like they had no jokes because they, they were writing the same jokes I was basically. Mm-hmm. Um, just really surface level shit. I guess that's probably what's changed. It's not there's not as many surface level jokes anymore. People have really gone into like getting specific and really diving deep into somebody's life and really just like fricasseeing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Jeff was really good about protecting me, and then I just had to get good. And what really sold the show was um, 
was I'd say Just for Laughs 2015, mm -hmm. and we called it wrote the Roastmasters Invitational. So we had a bunch of new faces. We had a bunch of uh, classic battlers like Sarah Tiana, Jimmy Carr, uh, Wanda Sykes was a judge. Michael Che was a judge. Pete Holmes came through. I mean, there was so many. It was like it that that festival I'll never forget because it was insane. Wow. I think uh, they were shooting a new X Men out there. So by the last night, it was Michael Fassbender, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Olivia. What's her name? At the, he was at the judges' table. Oh my god! It was nuts, man. It was nuts. Yeah, meeting Michael Fassbender at the end of the show, like rolling a joint on stage. Like he was just yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. big dick Michael Fassbender. Yeah, big dick Michael Fassbender. Yeah, yo, yeah. True. What's her name? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Wow. Met her. Yeah. Dennis Quaid. That was. A, that was. A I wouldn't be able to tell jokes if Jennifer Lawrence was in the room, dude. Yeah. I would just be like, anyway, this guy looks like a. Yeah. I'm in love with you, Jennifer. I'm yeah. So sorry. I just need to. And she's so cool. <laughs> like. Yeah. You talk to Jennifer Lawrence, you feel like you have a chance with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, she's, like, the coolest, nicest person. I mean, obviously, she's not going to date anybody in that room, but she was just so nice. Like, you were one of her best friends for, like, years. Yeah, Talking sure. to you like, oh, yeah, I used to ride horses. Oh. Talking about, like, she's just so fucking cool. The hottest horse girl. Yeah, the queen, dude. hottest horse girl. The hottest horse girl. Damn. Well, yeah. can I ask you, so, you, you, they go, you got to get good in order to do this, and you say that you're changing the way that you're being a host on stage. Yeah, to be more well, host-like. Like, so, were you... Were like the people from like Comedy Central coming to these the shows in the belly room and like kind of seeing how it's going? Was that how you de they determined okay you're ready or not? No, they just whenever they're there because like you know we we they wouldn't just come and like scout it they they'd have showcases so we had like two or three showcases I remember in front of like all the networks in town right like even CMT is in that bitch uh, and yeah that's when you know that's when you get the feedback or whatever sure. for the most part and we got one offer but. uh the guy who was on our team at the time was our partner. Mm -hmm. He didn't want it, so we we didn't do it. It was like a six episode deal with Fuse or something. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, at that time, it's just like no pilot. You're just gonna give us like a whole show, six. I'm like that's crazy. We'll be on TV, and then yeah. So uh, the first season, what's the word that you are hosting? How does that go? How, what's the official? Well, thing after like? yeah, after Roastmasters, I mean, yeah, yeah, I hosted my ass off on that show. Mm -hmm. I really went after everybody. Um, I remember there was one point like Michael Chase said something about. Uh, because I said something about him being like, I was like, oh, it's the guy that gets the jobs that Gerard doesn't want. Mm -hmm. um, and then he says, I'm like, well, me and Gerard will be getting all the jobs and you'll still be here. <laughs> I was like, and he's right. <laughs> I'm still here. Uh, but that was fun, man. It was, it was just, it was mainly just like, you, you treat it like a, like a sport. You know, you're going in, you're preparing, you're really sure. like, you know, honing your craft and you're just like, I mean, I stopped like worrying about my stand up and I just was worrying about this show and just like being able to be on this show. Sure. So that's really what it was. Damn. First season comes out. You're waiting for ratings now, right? First season did well, um, for the most part. First and second season did pretty well. Uh, I don't, th I don't think it got the ratings that the network wanted, mm -hmm. but it got enough to get us a second season. And that second season, I think the first episode or two, um, rated pretty well, like mm -hmm. in the top fifty. Sure. So then we got a third season, and then by then they were like, "This just costs too much money." Mm. But and the clips are still huge on the internet. Like, it definitely really? resonated. Yeah, millions of views for some of these. I love it. You know? You're not paying attention to the to the big clips on the internet? No, oh. just ours. Just, just Rose Battle on Instagram. <laughs> best, Rose clips Battle. On, best clips outside of Rose Battle Chicago. Yes, Rose Battle on Instagram, Rose Battle on YouTube. Um, yeah, Rose Battle on YouTube, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, that's very good. Um, that's exciting, though. So yeah. now we're post, we're in this weird post era where it's like, all right, Oh, we're in it. We're like we're we're shooting television now. We're getting like TV episodes. I think like yeah, us, Gerard. I think Whitney's show ends at that time or something like that. So mm -hmm. at that time, yeah, it's like it's me, Josh Adam Myers. I think Gerard's got a show. So like guys, we were all coming up with. They're all like you know getting in writers' rooms or getting their own TV shows and things like that. So mm -hmm. it was cool, man. And then uh, with the success of that, Viacom reached out to their you know their uh, international affiliates, and then uh, we. They brought these executives over from the UK, and they actually came to the belly room. Like, I gotta say, Viacom here in the states only came like once, maybe once, and like we we're like, ah, we got it. And then they shot the show, and the show was whatever the fuck it was, right? This big glossy Super Bowl thing that we didn't want. Mm. But then the UK people were like, yo, we like this version. And that's why I think the UK version is a little better than the uh, than the American version, mm. just because it just kind of has the bones of what we were doing in that room more so than like whatever whatever you know uh comedy central wanted to do in the states they gotcha. made it they made it their own they made it big and glossy and whatever it is but the uk was just like no nah, we'll keep three judges we'll spend the money on the stage on the background and you know the uh the talent that's battling do you feel 
do you feel that like the way it came out, the show was shot, is not necessarily your vision for roast battle? It's not what I wanted. Um, I mean, listen, I I love all the people that have, that have produced this show from Fullwell 70, uh, 72, 73, Sorry, James Corden, <laughs> and uh, and here in the states, Joel Gallon, the Tenth Planet. Um, I li- I they're they're all they're great companies. Um, but that wasn't our vision. We wanted something grittier. Yeah, we wanted like something like look at a fucking like a backyard alley fight. Sure, yeah. sure, sure, sure. Well, that's a fucking. That's always an interesting thing to watch, like artists that are like moving into that next level, and they gotta fucking they gotta reconcile what the big players want with all the money, and how they want to sand it all down. So yeah, they spent all their money on talent. I remember there was there was one conversation about uh oh we gotta make sure we gotta pay for Jimmy Kimmel's you know jet fuel. I'm just like you guys are spending this like this is what the money's going towards. Like it was too expensive for Comedy Central to keep going. Had they cut that budget in half, we'd probably still be on air. Like okay. we didn't need all those. We didn't need the big name judges. I know at the time, because we're working, we're working with older people. We're working with like Gen Zers or millennials. We're working like you know, Gen Xers and baby boomers for the most part. So they have this old school mentality of what's going to work for television. Mm. And ultimately, it just cost them too much money that nobody was watching. Because you know who really cares about Seth Rogen and Jimmy Kimmel judging two nobodies? Mm-hmm. Nobody, unless they're doing stand up themselves. You can see them on you can see them on air for more than fifteen or thirty minutes at a time. But Five minute intervals of, of Jimmy Kimmel and, and Seth Rogen. I don't think anybody cared. Damn, dude. And they spent all their money on talent. I'm sorry, that on the judging talent, the Kevin Hart's, the Whitney, uh, the Whoopi Goldbergs, the uh, you know the, the John Mayers, and you know just Snoop Dogg. So all that money went towards that. And I like what the UK did, which is like, nah, we'll spend money on the stage and the presentation, and that's why it was the highest rated Comedy Central show in the UK mm-hmm. in history. 